Okay. <clears throat> Good morning. Year six. Geography. Week three. The way we're going to do it this time is we're just going to have one lesson that runs through all our geography lessons for week three. The reason being is that it might be a little bit easier and then you can just go back to the same video. Rather than having four different videos, we can just have one video that we can go back and continue on where we're up to. We are doing lesson 15 today. So you should have this document with you. It should have been sent through in an email <clears throat> and you should see that we're with you. So our topic that we've been looking at is cultural diversity. And we're doing a case study today on the Inuit, Aymara and Dayak peoples and how they compare. So there is a video in here as well. The video will be within the actual video on YouTube. So there's a video in this document. Don't worry about trying to play it in your own um, in your own browser, excuse me, or in your own PDF. Uh, I'll play it on here, so that'll make life a little bit easier for us, and hopefully that should come through okay. <clears throat> so, let's go through what we're going to look at today and over the course of our four short lessons for week three. We're gonna understand the cultural diversity of cultural, sorry, understand the diversity of cultural characteristics of indigenous peoples, understand interconnections between environmental and cultural character, characteristics of groups. So what we need is a video, we'll play that within here. We also need sheet 14, which is the Indigenous People's Stimulus Set. We'll get to that when we need. So, let's have a look at our understanding of cultural diversity and what we looked at last week. So the focus of the lesson is the world's cultural diversity of Indigenous peoples. That means people that originally lived in a certain area or a certain country. Looking at similarities and differences between selected Indigenous peoples who live in different regions in the world. Before we begin, let's examine what we mean by cultural diversity again. So we're retouching on that again. Culture is a set of is a shared set of beliefs, values, attitudes, and lifestyles. If a group of people does things in a certain way with similar beliefs and similar values, then it is part of a culture. If the people have similar religions, customs, and celebrations, then that is part of a culture. There are many different cultures in the world. We spoke about last week how there's lots and lots of different types of things that might relate to culture, food, dress, celebrations, uh, religion, all sorts of things. And <clears throat> that is really important when it comes to talking about the differences between them. And remember that that word diversity, again, it means difference. The differences between certain cultures is something that is uh, both uh, really important to recognise, but um, there can be some really tremendous differences across different cultures. So cultural diversity then is the cultural variety and the differences that exist in the world, a society or different groups and communities. Just as each culture is different, each individual within that culture is different as well. People can be part of more than one culture. For example, a person might be Vietnamese but also Australian. And there are some people in our grade that are, uh, I guess, part of lots of different cultures. And we had a chat in our class last week, there was a few people in our class that might have come from another country or they might have um, other cultures that they connect to and then they've come to Australia and they're part of the Australian culture as well. So they're both from that place and from Australia and they've got two cultures that work um, hand in hand. And you might have mum from one country and dad from another and you've actually got different cultures around that as well. So do you identify with more than one culture? Can you describe your culture? So if you have a culture, and we're talking about all the things <clears throat> that make up a culture, where you come from being a really important one as well, but even things like religion and where maybe your parents or your family might come from. Uh, for example, I know that my mum's side comes from Austria, so we've got a pretty strong connection with my grandmother and her sister and my aunties and that sort of stuff with uh, Österreich, which is uh, Austria. So uh, that's something that's really important to us, and we do things like we might have certain drinks that are um, Austrian traditional drinks. I know that every year we try to get together and make Apfelstrudel, which is apple strudel, which is basically like a big, uh, giant homemade apple pie of sorts, but it's sort of like a big, long roll that's baked. It's delicious. Um, so things like that. So do you have something as well yourself? Have a bit of a think about that for me. So that leads us into question one. It says, describe your culture by identifying the following characteristics, which means stuff or things, about yourself and your family. So this can apply to anybody, whether you come from Australia or another country. So, what language do you speak? So, if you have more than one language, you can put 
the S in there. So we have uh, a couple of languages. So if you speak, if you're lucky enough or talented enough to speak a couple of languages, you can put them both in there. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the air conditioning going. It's going to be warm in here. There we go. Uh, do you identify with the religion? So uh, is your family religious? Do you go to church or mosque or synagogue or something like that to pray? And if you do, which one? What is your favourite celebration? I know that personally, I'm not particularly religious, but I grew up as a Catholic and Christmas was um, and Easter were particularly important. I don't identify as a Catholic these days, but I know that those celebrations are still quite important to me. And does your family have does your family have a special tradition? And what is it? Let's just double check. See how we're going. Going well. Good. Hopefully we're recording. Okay. Fingers crossed. If you're wondering what this little bump in my nose was, that was when my laptop attacked me last night, lying on my bed with my pillows under it, and it's leaned back and it's hit me square in the face and did some damage. So I got in a fight with my laptop. Don't get in a fight with your laptop, you'll probably lose. So, all right, on to the next one. What type of music do you like? So maybe rather than a band or rather than a singer, you might talk about a genre of music. Do you like rap or hip hop? Do you like trap music? Do you like jazz? Do you like classical? Do you like rock or pop music? Personally, I like a lot of different styles of music. I'm a big fan of uh, general and classical rock and all different types of rock music. Um, I like everything from uh, really classical early rock, things like the Beatles and the early Rolling Stones, to uh, I like heavier rock, uh, to bands like possibly you might say Metallica or your Pantera's. Uh, bands called Slayer, and then I'm a, I'm a big fan, uh, and I grew up with a genre called pop punk, which basically was in the 2000s, and there are a lot of bands that sang uh, pretty upbeat sort of music as well. Do you play a sport, or do you play several sports, and what's your favourite meal? Remember, all these things make up culture, so we're answering question one. Sorry, got to stay hydrated. <clears throat> so here we go. Um, so this little fella here, he speaks English and German. He's a Dachshund, after all. That is a dog breed from Germany, like a German Shepherd. My family identifies as Christian, more specifically Lutheran, which is a type of Christian. I enjoy Christmas, but my family often opens presents on Christmas Eve, and that's the same thing for us in Austria. We open presents, well, we open a couple of presents on Christmas Eve, and then we open the rest on Christmas morning. It's sort of half German, Austrian, half Australian. <clears throat> which is different to many people in Australia. There you go. I really like Australian hip-hop and I play chess. Can you guess my favourite meal? I'm going to say, don't know. So if you haven't already, pause and complete question one. That's basically the first lesson for today, but we're going to continue into our lesson two now as we continue to work through this. Describe the location of selected Indigenous groups from all around the world. There are many places in the world that have their own people who are indigenous. Again, that word means they come from that place originally. For example, the people who are indigenous to the Arctic area, sorry if you can hear this, this is just me. Excuse me, of North America, the Inuit, and Greenland. Uh, the indigenous peoples in New Zealand are the Maori or the Māori. Māori. The indigenous peoples of Australia are the Aboriginal peoples and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Each indigenous group have their own cultural characteristics. Let's explore indigenous cultures by finding out where some of these different indigenous peoples are located in the world. So, here we go. Describe the location of selected indigenous peoples from around the world by using the following map and completing the statements. So, here is our map here. I might make that a little smaller so we can see everything that's going on. There we go. Okay. So we can see here that there are different colours relating to different uh, Indigenous people from around the world. Remember, that, again, that word Indigenous means native to that land. So the Inuit, we can see, are up around here. Uh, Tuareg, uh, through <clears throat> here into the Philippines, I think. Uh, no, I'm missing that. That's over in, sorry, that's over in Northwest Africa. Uh, the Dayak people, we can see, are in through Malaysia and the Philippines and Indonesia. Uh, Aymara, South America, over here. The Māori, in through New Zealand. And we have Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in Australia. So the questions say, uh, the Tuareg peoples are indigenous to which continent? So we have the continents labelled here. The Tuareg people, which continent are they indigenous to? You have to select one from here. 
The Amara people are indigenous to the continent of? The same question. The Dayak people are in, uh, sorry, the Dayak people's indigenous homelands are close to the, now which one of these are they close to? Well, let's find Dayak people first. So they're green, so let's locate them. And which area on the map are they close to? Are they close to the Arctic Circle at the top? The Tropic of Cancer line of latitude? We zoom in because that's zoomed out for me. So our Tropic of Cancer, the Tropic of Capricorn, are they close to that one? Or the equator? Or 30 degrees north? And that's a bit of a throwback to last year, 30 degrees north. We'll find up here which one are they closest to. Sorry, I know there's a bit of scrolling going on there. Finally, the Inuit people, their indigenous homelands are near how many oceans? So you have to look back at the map and the Inuit people are near one, two, three, or four oceans. You need to have a look on that map as well. Okay, that's a little, that'll be the last sip of that. Okay, moving on. Investigate selected indigenous cultures. <clears throat> Let's take a close look at the Inuit peoples of the Arctic, Amara peoples of Bolivia, and the Dayak peoples of Borneo to see how they are similar and different. So, we're going to watch the video now, and that will be the remainder of Lesson 2. After the video, we are going to come back and uh, start Lesson 3, where we actually do some activities off that. So, if you want to stop at Lesson 2 after the video, you're welcome to come back tomorrow and do your uh, activity relating to the video, and just re-watch the video again if you like. Or you can move all the way through it now if you like. So, hopefully this opens up okay. This presentation examines the cultural diversity of three indigenous groups. Now I'm going to let that video run for a little bit and I'll be back shortly when it's finished. The Inuit of the Arctic, the Aymara peoples of Bolivia and the Dayak peoples of Borneo. Throughout the video you will be asked to pause and fill out the summary table in Lesson 15. Don't worry if you miss something, Sheet 15 will also help you to complete that activity. The Inuit are an indigenous group who make their home in the Arctic and subarctic regions of Siberia and North America. They live primarily along the far northern sea coasts of Alaska, Canada and Greenland. The Amara are an indigenous group who live in the Andes and high mountainous plain regions of South America, within Bolivia and Peru and parts of Chile and Argentina. The Dayak peoples are a group of indigenous people who live in a tropical equatorial region on the island of Borneo. Pause the video now and fill out the location row of the table. The Inuit, the Aymara and the Dayak peoples also experience very different climates and this obviously affects how they live. Look at this climate graph for Attawapiskat in Ontario, Canada, which is an area that the Inuit traditionally inhabit. Note how cold it gets in the Northern Hemisphere winter in this place. The average maximum temperature is only minus 17 in January, while the average minimum is a freezing minus 29. How might the climate of this place affect the customs, habits, beliefs and way of life of the Inuit? Pause the video now and fill out the climate section of the table for the Inuit peoples. Being located in the Andes in the Southern Hemisphere, the Aymara people experience a very different climate than that of the Inuit peoples far to the north. Look at this climate graph for La Paz in Bolivia. Although it still has cold winters, it is certainly warmer overall than in Alaska and northern parts of Canada. How might the climate of this place affect the customs, habits, beliefs and way of life of the Aymara people? Pause the video now and fill out the climate section of the table for the Aymara peoples. Look at this climate graph for Balaga, Malaysia, which is in the interior of Borneo. It's a very different climate to those of the Inuit and Aymara. Here it is hot and wet all year. So how might the climate of this place affect the customs, habits, beliefs and way of life of the Dayak people? Pause the video now and fill out the climate section of the table for the Dayak people. You can see from this world vegetation map that the Inuit live in the region of the world which is the least hospitable to human habitation, the tundra region. 
Most of the land is flat and barren. Only the top part of the frozen earth thaws out during the summer months. Pause the video now and fill out the vegetation section of the table for the Inuit people. The Amara people live in high mountainous regions, which can make living conditions difficult for other reasons. The altitude, cold nights and poor soil greatly limit the types of crops that can be grown. The lack of oxygen in the air in these high altitude regions can leave a person with altitude sickness. In order to adapt to life in the mountains, the Amara people have developed physical traits that enable them to survive, including a greatly increased lung capacity. Pause the video now and fill out the vegetation section of the table for the Amara people. The Dayak people live in a hot, wet rainforest in the equatorial region. They live in the forest while trying to sustain it. Pause the video now and fill out the vegetation section of the table for the Dayak people. Environment plays a large part in influencing culture and in shaping the culture of different groups. The Inuit, the Aymara and the Dayak all live in very different environments with different resources. This in turn affects their beliefs and values and the ways in which they live. The Inuit peoples of North America inhabit a place suited to nomadic hunting and gathering. Traditionally, the Inuit were hunters and gatherers. They moved about in their environment hunting caribou and other game. Like all indigenous peoples, the traditional Inuit relied on their environment for all their resources. Their houses were built of snow and ice, and their clothing came from skins and furs of animals. They hunted in the tundra and seas, such as this woman's parka of the early 1900s, which was made from caribou skins. Their environment inspired their stories of creation and religious beliefs, and it is said that some people believe that their ancestors' faces could be seen in the northern lights. The Inuit peoples speak a number of different languages which are difficult to differentiate. They have many, many different words for the word snow. Inuit art depicts their life and world. They use materials found in their environment, mainly using whatever material is in good supply. Sometimes this can be stone, animal bones or ivory tusks. They prefer to carve using walrus ivory and soft stone. Their sculptures are carved by hand, usually using an axe and a file. Inuit sculptures can be found either polished or unpolished. The Inuits make their carpets from the skins of animals. The carpet, which is shown here, is made from seal skins. Pause the video now. Fill out as much of the table as you can in the Inuit cultural characteristics column. The native language of the Aymara is Aymara. Many Aymara speak Spanish as a second language in the areas where they live. Their religion is tied to their environment where they believe in the spirits that live in the mountains, the sky, or the natural forces such as lightning. Aymara have a very old and rich musical tradition. Drums and flutes are featured at festivals and celebrations. Pan pipes and the pututu horn, made out of hollowed out cow's horn, are traditional instruments that are still played. Traditional dances have been passed down through generations and often feature large bright masks and costumes. The Amara have many holidays and festivals during the year to celebrate their cultural heritage. One important festival is called Carnival. It is a widely celebrated festival throughout South America. Dancing to drums and flutes accompanies a week-long celebration. Also important is the festival Alakistas, which features the god of good luck, most households have a ceramic figure of the good luck spirit known as Ikiko. This spirit is believed to bring prosperity and grant wishes. Many Aymara people who live in the harsh, high-altitude environments of Bolivia are farmers. The most important crop is potato with corn, kino and barley. Many families own land at different altitudes which enables them to grow several different crops. Tractors and even oxen teams are rarely used high in the Andes. The men often do the ploughing and digging by hand, and the women do the planting. The Amara are also herders. They get both wool and meat from herds of llamas, alpacas, and sheep. Because the Amara people live in high-altitude areas, they dress to their climate. The strong winds and low temperatures in the mountains require warm woolen clothing. Women wear long skirts and sweaters. The skirts are worn in layers. For festivals or important occasions, women wear as many as five or six skirts on top of each other. Brightly coloured shawls are used to strap babies to their mother's back or to carry loads of goods. Amara men wear long cotton trousers and woolen caps with ear flaps. In many regions, men also wear ponchos. 
The Amara live in extended families in one house or in a small cluster of houses. The Amara people celebrate marriage ceremonies with long feasts. Other events they celebrate are the planting and the building of a house. The Amara are skilled weavers, a tradition dating back to the time before the Incas. They use a great many materials in their weaving, including cotton, as well as wool from sheep, alpacas, and llamas. The Amara also use totora reeds to make fishing boats, baskets, and other articles. Pause the video now. Fill out as much of the table as you can in the Amara cultural characteristics column. Borneo's indigenous people, known collectively as Dayaks, belong to many different tribal groups that speak about 140 languages and dialects. For thousands of years, they have lived in remote coastal and mountainous communities, relying on the rainforest for their resources. Traditionally, they were hunters and gatherers who also grew rice. Many of the Dayaks lived in communal longhouses built from timber cut down from the forests. Dance and ceremony, as with the other indigenous peoples, was an important part of religious ceremonies. Like other indigenous peoples of rainforests, the Dayak people coexist with their environment and work to protect their forests. Dayak art is related to their religion and tribal structures. Special attention is given to their baby carriages and they are decorated with objects and animals to protect them. The Dayak ceremonial costumes are adorned with feathers and often intricate in design. As you can see here, they were also very colourful. Pause the video now. Fill out as much of the table as you can in the Dayak cultural characteristics column. This presentation examines the cultural diversity of three indigenous groups, the Inuit of the Arctic, the Aymara peoples of Bolivia, and the Dayak peoples of Borneo. Throughout the video, you will be asked to pause and fill out the summary table in Lesson 15. Don't worry if you miss... Okay. So we're back again. Sorry, that ran a little bit long. I was actually just putting a sign up to uh, let everybody know that we're doing some filming in here. Okay, so throughout that video, hopefully you can hear me okay, <clears throat> throughout that video it asked you to pause and complete the table. So we've ended lesson two, now we're into lesson three, and in lesson three we are actually completing this table now. So the, the goal at the end of lesson two was to watch a video, lesson three, possibly go back and re-watch the video, and then we're actually going to complete this table while we do that. So the video does a wonderful job at actually showing you or telling you uh, the answers and telling you when to pause those and the information you can get straight from the video itself. So in this table it's asking you to talk about the location for the Inuit, the Dayak and the Amara. Then we move through into the climate, so what's the temperature and the weather like for each of the three. Vegetation, the cultural characteristics, so what do they talk about when it comes to food. Clothing, so what particular characteristics are there to do with clothing? Customs and traditions, and that would include any celebrations they have, things like dance, songs, that sort of stuff. And all those answers can be found within that video that we just watched. So if you're not sure of one of them or two, go back, re-watch, pause when it tells you to pause, and come back and pop those answers in there. Uh, we also have language and art, sorry, as well. So that can... That, um, table does actually continue across those three pages. So it starts up here at table one, goes through that page there and then into <clears throat> that page finally. So the final uh, activity, so basically completing that table, re-watching the video, that's lesson three and we're on to lesson four now. So we've worked our way through really quickly. Now obviously this does take a little bit of time to complete these activities but our geography and our history lessons, our Hass lessons, are essentially one large lesson that's broken up into four little half hour blocks over the course of the week. So you can choose to do it all in one go, or you can break it up a little bit as we mapped out in our timetable. So for lesson four, which is our final lesson for the week, for week three, we need sheet 14. So I'm just going to open that now and show you that one. There we are. Okay. And this is called Indigenous People's Stimulus Set. Remember, a stimulus is just basically a uh, piece of information, whether it's a picture or a graph or a piece of text, that you get, can get information from to help you answer some questions as well. Okay, so this is the sheet that we have here. Let's go through what the actual activity asks us to do. So, activity five says, examine connections between environmental and cultural characteristics. 
Location plays, plays a large part in influencing the cultural character, characteristics mouthful, of places. For example, it's very cold in the Arctic Circle, and so many different cultural characteristics are affected. What materials are used for clothing and shelter, what people eat, and how natural characteristics on the land, ice, and in the sky, the northern lights are explained. So the location of a particular group plays a big role in terms of uh, elements of, of that group's culture. Okay, climate and environment play a large part in influencing culture and shaping the customs, habits, social organisation and ways of life that characterise different Indigenous groups. Just basically a longer way of saying the same thing that I just said. When practising traditional lifestyles, different Indigenous groups rely heavily on what the environment provides for them. The foods that Indigenous peoples eat, Indigenous people eat and the types of houses they build and the way they survive in a place are all influenced by their environment and their climate. So, final activity is this table here that we can see. So it's just this simple, uh, sorry, just this page here. Question six, it says, identify how the Inuit, Dayak and Amara peoples, the same people we studied before, are affected by their environment. Use sheet 14 to help you, which is the sheet that we had up here, which was the second sheet. That will be in your email. So remember, if the links don't actually work in your PDF, then you can um, access the sheet from your email itself, which will be in there. An example has been completed as a guide. So they have done the Amara people. So we're answering questions about how the, um, well, temperature, how the climate, basically, and, and the environment in general affect each of these three things. And you can see there that we have clothing, food, and shelter. So let's look at the Amara people. So it says the Amara people, they have a temperate climate, which means cold at night, which means comfortable in the daytime, mountainous and grassy plains. So that's the sort of places that they live. So their clothing is connected to that. So we can see it says they had mainly woolen clothing, which would make sense because it's cold at night, skirts, sweaters, and ponchos, all to keep you warm and, and help um, make sure you're comfortable. Food, so mountainous and grassy plains, so the food will be influenced by that. So they had farming, so they grew crops, which was good, uh, and the grassy plains would have allowed them to do that. Uh, cocoa, corn, and sweet potato, herding animals, known for wool like alpacas, llamas, and sheep, and they would have used that wool for clothing. And the example for shelter, they had houses made of grass and mud. Now, if they were in the snow, would that work? Would that be effective? Probably not. So we're going to see how that influences the other two as well. So if we go down, we need to answer the same questions about clothing, food, and shelter. Let me make that a little smaller so we can see them. There we go. For the Inuit and the Dayak people. So remember, the Inuit live in far North America and Greenland, very cold climate, and tundra, which is frozen ground, ice, and snow. So for example, would they be wearing uh, minimal clothes? Would that be appropriate? Uh, what sort of food would they be growing lots and lots of crops on frozen snowy ground? Maybe not. And then what would their shelters look like? Would uh, grass and mud huts work for this sort of climate? Maybe, maybe not. The Dayak people, we have tropical climate, so probably wearing a lot of wool probably wouldn't fit very well, would it? And rainforest, mountainous and coastal, so that would influence them as well. Now the information for this we will find in here. Okay, so there's lots of different information we can use to answer those questions. So we have the Inuit people there, and the Dayak people there, and the Amara. So that's where we got the Amara information from, and there's really some quite interesting information in there. Everything from the things that they wear, to the foods that they eat, to their environment and their climate. We've got temperatures here. So use this information, Dayak people, have a read through this stuff, to answer that table for the Inuit and the Dayak people as well. Folks, that's it. So that's all four of our lessons all rolled into one. You don't have to do them all at once. You can do it all in one in one lesson if you like, one big long lesson, or you can break them into the four like we suggested in the timetable. The important takeaway is in this lesson you study the similarities and differences between selected indigenous cultures of the world and their connections with the environment. And it was pretty interesting stuff, I think, as well. Again, that's sheet 14, I think it is. It's sheet 14. Sheet 14. Really interesting stuff, so make sure you have a read through that stuff as well. Uh, ladies and gents, that is the end of geography for week three. So lesson 15 for geography is all done. I'll see you in history.
Thanks. Bye.